please welcome your host, Perdita Felician. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Ontario Coaching Excellence Awards. Like you just saw, my name is Perdita Felician, and I'm thrilled to be hosting for the second year in a row. I mean, that means I did an okay job last year, right? You know that I'm here on behalf of the Coaches Association of Ontario. Before we begin, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the First Nations, Indigenous, Inuit, and Métis peoples of Canada as the keepers of the territory upon which we are all watching from today. So coaches have a very special place in my heart. Of course, it was Mrs. Arthurs from uh, my grade three gym class that introduced me to track and field at Glengrove Public School in Pickering, Ontario. Shout out to you. And of course, Mrs. Hurst in grade seven, who introduced me to the hurdles. I hated them. I hated them, but thank you, Mrs. Hurst. And the Sahadis, my two coaches in grade 12, who like made me run so much, I felt like puking when I was getting ready for Opsa. <laughs> yeah, you never forget your coaches, right? That is why we are here to celebrate them. Before we begin though, I wanna introduce you to a very special guest who's here to say a few words on behalf of the government of Ontario. So please welcome the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Cultural Industries, the Honorable Lisa McLeod. Thank you for the kind introduction, Perdita. We are so incredibly proud of all of your accomplishments. I'm Lisa McLeod, Ontario's Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries. And I can say as a coach myself, coaches are truly the backbone of sport and recreation, playing an integral role in not only training our athletes right from the playground to podium, but also in supporting key mental health support initiatives and providing inspiration and guidance. You're the reason why this year, our Ontario athletes had an outstanding performance at the Tokyo Summer Olympics, bringing back 67% of Team Canada's medals. And I am proud to send my warmest greetings and congratulations to all recipients and organizers for this year's Coaches Excellence Awards. As Ontario's sports minister, I'm proud of this work and I'm proud of the collaboration that has gone into making Ontario one of the first jurisdictions in North America to reopen our sports facilities for high performance athletes to train those Olympians, including at the CSIO. We have also flowed close to $60 million for our sport and recreation sector in 2020 to 2021 to support our athletes, including 6.36 million toward the quest for gold, and 18 million to 66 provincial sport organizations that support over 2.1 million athletes, coaches, officials. The ministry is proud to have also provided close to $1.1 million to Coaches Association of Ontario to support the development throughout our province. So congratulations to all of this year's recipients. The work you do has helped to ensure that Ontario remains the best place to live, work, play, and of course train for Olympic medals. Back over to you, Pratita. Thank you, Minister McLeod. I know I love your energy, and we greatly appreciate your government's continued support of Ontario's greatest asset, our coaches. Okay, shall we get this party started? Yeah, I think we should. The great thing about these virtual events is you know where the bar is. You know where the restrooms are. I don't have to tell you. So grab a snack, grab a bevy. It's going to be a really incredible hour. Today's celebration marks the start of a very special time, National Coaches Week, the seventh year in a row for that distinction. It's a week devoted to people who honestly, in my opinion, they don't get enough recognition. So let's fix that, shall we? A coach's impact is far and wide. And I love this saying. Yeah, I love a good saying. One coach can impact more people in one year than the average person does in a lifetime. Wow. That's why all week, from September 18th to the 26th, communities all across the province, athletes, parents, mayors, your dog, you name it, they'll be showing their support for their coaches. We want you to do the same online. Because like, if you didn't post it on social media, did it actually happen? Yeah, that's another one of my sayings. Be sure to use the hashtag, thanks coach, and show us the wonderful ways you're recognizing the achievements of these true heroes of sport. So I know you're wondering, what is on tab? What are we doing? You'll be happy. We have a really incredible program planned for you throughout this evening. You'll hear stories that inspire and unite us all. And I want you to focus in on this saying. I love a good saying, don't I? A good coach can change the game, but a great coach, they can change a life. I say that because I know it from personal experience. Okay, ready to get to good stuff? Yeah, I think so.
our first award category, the Grassroots Coach Awards. Now, these coaches, they really lay the foundation for an athlete's future. They can inject joy and hunger into a budding athlete's career while helping them develop skills they'll use throughout their lifetime. Tonight, our male and female award winners, well, they've mastered this art. Our male recipient hails from Oakville and is a young soccer coach pursuing his passion of mentorship and coaching. Matthew Aslett believes that success of his athletes and ultimately his coaching are empowering each of his athletes to become the best version of themselves on and off the field. His motto is achieving, believing, inspiring. Look who is joining me now, the man himself, Matthew Aslett. Congratulations. Thank you so much and nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Okay, I hear from my friends that you're a very humble guy and I'm gonna say, no need to be humble now, okay? You can brag. When you first heard that you got this award, what were the thoughts that were swirling through your mind? Honestly, I was so honored and thankful to all the athletes and coaches that I've worked with. Mm -hmm. It's been such an incredible journey and you never work for the awards as a coach, but to me, like the, the impact that I've been able to make and also the impact that the athletes have made on me is something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life and has inspired me to become that lifelong teacher and coach. Yeah, that's the thing we always talk about, right? The, you know, the impact a coach has on their athletes. But I want to know mm -hmm. what your athletes have, how they've impacted you or what they have taught you. Absolutely. I'd say one of the biggest lessons is really this determination and passion for what you do, whether it be coaching at any level, being a teacher or even a worker in any industry giving your best and constantly overcoming adversity will allow you to achieve any objective you set your mind to. And I always tell my athletes, dream big, no matter what goal you set, you can accomplish it and I'll be there to help. And it's so great when they're there to help me and we work together on so many projects outside of the sports realm and now in the educational realm. And you just learn so much every day. It's always a learning experience. Yeah, it is always learning experience, right? You take that all in. It's almost like a, you know, sport they say is a microcosm for life. And you can Absolutely. apply that to your future. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so you're like having the best day ever, but we're going to make it even sweeter. Let's roll the tape. Hi, Matthew. Um, I'm here and uh, I want to say a couple of words. And this is for you. Um, first of all, let me start by thanking you for bringing me on this beautiful journey of coaching with you and uh, really mentoring uh, me as a coach. And as a friend, students love having you as a coach, as a mentor, as a support system um, at the schools that, the, that you've coached at. And, and uh, more importantly, they value your effort. Uh, you know, Matthew, you are always, always the first one on the field when it comes to coaching. You're when Hinder when it's game day or practice, you're there first, first one there and you're the last one out. I remember there was one morning um, he was studying at Queen's University and we had practice at 7 a.m. because we'd usually start studying at 8.30 for class. And he would commute, like he would start commuting at like four or five in the morning just to get to practice at 7 a.m. And then he'd have like his breakfast in his hand. And then like just after our practice, just to go back, back to Kingston and keep studying. So he'd always just like have that little space in his heart, just always for us and always for our team. And I think that was really special. Matthew, I just wanted to say congratulations on this amazing award. I'm so happy that I was able to contribute to your success as a coach, as a person. And um, you, you've meant so much to me in my life, in my career as an athlete, as a student, as a person. Um, you've known me since elementary school, grade six. I'm not sure how old I was, maybe, maybe 12, maybe 11 years old. You've watched me grow into a man that I am now. I've watched you and your successes. I wouldn't only call you my coach, I wouldn't call you a mentor, but you're, you're a friend to me, Matthew. And I'm so happy that you won this award. And um, I couldn't be more thankful for everything that you've done. Oh, that was so good to see. But I want to key in on one thing. You drove from Kingston to Oakville and then back again. Like, how's the mileage on your car doing? Too funny. It came to the point where I had to get like a semester train pass to make sure I could come back so much. I loved coaching. I loved being part of the team. And I knew that I didn't want to give that up, even though that I was studying far away. And it was really great that the school was accommodating in terms of scheduling practices around my schedule. And just being there with the athletes, honestly, was so uplifting. Like I never woke up and was tired from it. I just was ready to go. And those are the mornings that were honestly like the highlights for me throughout that time. 
Yeah, I can just see your enthusiasm and passion. Like, I've been retired for 10 years, but if I unretired, I'd ask you to coach me, okay? <laughs> That's how good you are. I can tell you love what you do. You're too kind. <laughs> Absolutely. So I want to close up with this question. I just want to know from you, what's been the best part of this ride for you? I know it's still going, but so far. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say the best part of the ride has been watching these athletes grow. And the, for me, the mentorship is a two-way learning relationship. You're always learning from them and you're also teaching them. But when I remember, for example, some of the individuals in the video, when I started coaching or working with them, they were students and now they've gone on to university and that's like been five, six, seven years. And it's incredible to see that we all still keep in touch. And most importantly, that I've inspired them to coach themselves and be leaders in the community, whether it be through sport or anything they're passionate about. I think that to me is the biggest success, having those connections of people who can continue the legacy that we want to set as inspiring coaches. Wow, you're such a shining star, and we are so thank fortunate you. to have you in this province. Congratulations, and thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Next up is our female recipient who embodies positivity and passion. Jessica Brown represents Skate Canada, Brampton, Chincuzi, and the Gold Ice Synchronized Skating Program. For Jessica, skating is her family, and she's all about creating a culture that is positive, inclusive, and fun. That's what drives this coach to create the best experience for her young skaters to learn and grow. Welcome, Jessica, and congrats on the award. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to uh, be nominated and had one and have the opportunity to be interviewed today. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, so let's get into our chat because I know for you, skating is like a family aspect for you. Why is that key to your work, making it feel like a family atmosphere? Yeah, I think it's so important. Um, myself and my uh, coaching team, along with the support team, think it's super important that we create a sense of family. Um, it's a safe place for our skaters to join. Um, you know, we create a sense of trust and that, you know, they're, that people feel um, included when they join. And I think um, it's so important to get our parents um, as well as all the stakeholders involved. Um, it's not just about the skaters. And I think that's what's so important. Um, we really do treat it as a sense of community because uh, the parents are just as important. They're spending so much time um, as well as well as money. Um, to get their kids uh, involved in a sport. And we really think it's important that they're involved from volunteering, um, cheering, coming to events that we hold. So a sense of community is so important. Yeah, that's really significant, especially like with figure skating where the athletes start so young, right? It's so important. Okay, so I know you're an athlete yourself. I was an athlete too, and I'm like, I don't think I could ever coach. It'd be like a lot of responsibility. But I wanna know how having been an athlete has influenced you know, your coaching style. I think that I knew I always wanted to be involved in some sense once I was done uh, being, you know, competing and my um, competitive career was done. Um, I wasn't sure if that was going to be coaching. Uh, I did end up going down that route, which I'm so grateful for. Um, however, I think being able to physically do the skills that I'm trying to train my athletes to do is so beneficial. And then paired with the um, teaching skills that I've learned through training and courses, now I just think it's a good blend to be able to not only do the exercises and skills that I'm asking my skaters to do, but have it um, as well now teaching tools uh, from professionals and years of experience to incorporate. So I think the combination of both really just helps me um, you know, be the best coach I can be. Yeah, coaching is such an awesome uh, responsibility, I like to say, and it's not for everyone because there's a certain level of like patience and understanding that you need to have and, you know, trying to gear this athlete to believe in themselves is not the easiest. So we really appreciate you. So I have a surprise for you, okay? Okay. <laughs> and I want you to really check out the screen for a moment. Okay. Jessica, I think it's it goes without saying you're drive for the synchronized skating community alongside of the gold ice organization is huge it shows great character that you have rebuilt an organization down from the little guys teaching them how to skate all the way up to the junior level um, i think it says a lot about your character and passion for each of the kids and their development you're able to create this um, sense of family within the teams um, you know, just a sense of belonging and definitely, um, you know, you can tell 
through competitions and, you know, being a team manager, you can tell in your skaters um, the passion and the commitment you have to all the kids that you coach. Um, definitely, I saw it in my in, in Trinity and as well as all the synchro girls that you coach. You can tell, um, you know, being in the room after competition, the confidence and, and really that's a true testament on what a great coach and passion and commitment you have to every single girl um, on the teams, as well as everybody that you coach, um, you know, in singles. You have uh, grown from an amazing individual athlete all the way into a beautiful lady and a beautiful coach who has achieved so much and has given so much to both the sport and the individuals. You care about these uh, skaters and these athletes as individuals and not just as athletes. You help create well-rounded people. Um, it says, they say it always takes a village and you're part of that village and you're making a great contribution to the girls and their lives. And their wow, those are such great endorsements. I've just met you, but just hearing everyone speak about you, like your passion is just what to me comes to the surface. When you hear that, what comes to mind for you? It's honestly, it's so beautiful and so nice to hear from people that have been um, such been big impacts in my life, both personally and professionally as a coach. And each three of those um, people that spoke on behalf of me and my experiences um, have just been so integral and, in, you know, both shaping my personal life, as I said, but helping grow and support um, the Gold Ice program. Um, which I, which I coach, which is amazing. And um, it's so, it's such a, so nice to hear um, people say those things and be recognized for, you know, something that I just love to do. Yeah. And I want to know from you, of course, like I said, I've never coached, but I want to know if, as you're coaching and guiding your young athletes, do you know and understand that you're having that kind of impact and influence, or does it take hearing it out loud like that to really truly understand it? Um, I think we pocket a lot of things as coaches, as, as just as humans, just to be like, this is what we have to do. This is our timeline. This is our, you know, our goals for the season. And I think it's just always so get this done, do this for this person, do this for the athletes. Are we on track? And I think sometimes we, we forget to, you know, sit back and debrief on, you know, what we've accomplished, what we've accomplished with, you know, our coaching team, what, you know, each individual on the team has accomplished. So um, these sediments are, ama are amazing because um, you don't often hear them. You're, you're busy about, you know, coaching and, and running a program and ensuring, you know, everybody is happy and everybody is being heard. So it's, it's nice to hear these things about not only myself, but the program that I am running um, with my coaching team as well. Yeah, so, and much deserved. Yeah, it is great. And you bask in it. I got to say, I have a two-year-old daughter. Her name is Nova. And I know you should not project onto your kids, but I want her to be a figure skater, and I might have to come find you in like three awesome. years when she's ready. <laughs> Congrats That's amazing. Again. Absolutely. Take care, and thank you. Thank you so much. For our second category of awards, the Coaches Association of Ontario partnered with OFSA, and I love this acronym because it's like a tongue twister for me, the Ontario Federation of School Athletic Associations. How did I do? I got it all out, right? Yes, they're featuring some of my faves, teacher coaches. I mean, how could I forget Mrs. Masales in grade 10 getting ready for the track season at Pine Ridge Secondary School and the weather was bad outside and we had hurdle practice. So what did she do? She put all the hurdles in the hallway and we had to train for an hour up and down the hallway, past my science class and my other classes. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool, pretty awesome. One and done, never did it again, but I'll never forget that memory. Again, we have a male and female award winner. Our male winner takes us to Sudbury and Low Ellen Park Secondary School. In 1997, do you know that I won an OFSA championship in Sudbury? Yeah, I feel like this is coming full circle for me. Talking about Colin Ward, who's a dedicated teacher who knows just how to motivate his student athletes. And he believes that school sport is integral to training kids for real life. Oh yeah, I bet it does. I know it does, actually. He enjoys both summer and winter sports. Get this, he's a track and field coach, super cool, but he's also a ski coach? 
Colin does it all, basically. He leads by example also because he participates with the students on the trails and on the concrete gym floors. Yeah, he doesn't let them have all the fun. Hello, coach. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, I love that video because you're getting in the action with your athletes. Like, I want to know what that's all about because my coaches never did that. Oh, I find it's an effective way to uh, uh, get the kids involved if you can do it with them. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you for being with us today. Okay, so high school sports for me was one of my most cherished times in my life. But I want to know for you, what's the most rewarding part of, you know, coaching and training athletes at that level? That's a big question. Um, there's a lot of rewarding elements uh, at, at coaching at the high school level. Um, I think when you can take a kid and introduce them to a sport. Um, and then you can watch it become their passion and you can watch them run with it. And then they keep running with it when, when, when you're done with them. Uh, that has to be one of the more rewarding elements. Yeah, I, I can tell you that. Like I've been through every level, the grassroots to, of course, like the elite and the pro level. And one of the the times that you really never forget is when you start emerging as an athlete, and that typically starts in high school. So you have, you know, some of your um, some of your impacts. Well, a lot of your impacts, honestly, are things that last forever with an athlete. So you're hearing that from the horse's mouth, I'll say. So I have a treat for you. You don't see this coming, but I did, of course. So I want you to have a listen here. Colin's a mentor for the whole city, so it doesn't really matter what jersey you're wearing. Colin's there to support the athletes. And those athletes, Colin, approach you because they respect you. They know who you are. Uh, they see you in the community and, um, and, and they want that help. And, they, and you, you will stop everything and assist those students. And I think that's what not only makes Llewellyn Park great, it makes our community better. You were the reason that Luca left his former high school and came here. You are one of the biggest reasons, more than having his mom as his teacher. And um, you've what you've done for my son, you've done for, well, I think we could probably say at this point in his career, thousands of students. Your um, num number one, number one before athleticism is your kindness. And I don't think I've ever seen you get angry with a student, you are always kind. Um, and actually this morning, we had to talk about how does Llewellyn demonstrate inclusivity and equity? And right away, I turned to my colleague and I said, well, I think the cross country models that the best. Have such a positive energy that you bring into working and coaching those kids every day. And I think you're truly a role model in terms of sport and life in general for both myself and other teachers and coaches and the students themselves. And I think you have no idea the profound positive effect you've had on so many people over so many years. And I think you should just uh, celebrate this and be really proud of all the work. Wow, those are some big endorsements. I'm understanding that you're seeing this for the first time, so am I. But what strikes me is how gracious that you are to your students. Um, when you hear those words aloud, what comes to the surface for you? Well, it sounded a little bit like they were getting emotional, so I'm, I would say I was, I'm feeling the same. Um, that, uh, I'm, 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 I'm really grateful uh, that they um, uh, feel that way or that I might be having that kind of an impact because you, know, you don't have people tell you that very often to that degree. Yeah, that was very heartwarming. Yeah, that's true. You really don't have a lot of the athletes ha who can come back and say, hey, I'm 15 or 17 or 25 now. This is what you did for me. But you clearly are making a difference. OK. Mm -hmm. What do you hope that your athletes, as they you know, have you as their coach and their mentor for just a short time, honestly, what do you hope they take with them throughout their lifetime? Um. It, it, it's been interesting to watch a lot of students um, grow up when, uh, over the four years, five years that you coach them, um, and they change. 
Um, and I think sport um, can offer a framework um, for how to conduct your life going forward. Um, the skills you get as an athlete, the, the, the dedication you reveal or you express, the passion you feel, um, allows for that hard work, that determination. And I think you can take those skills or that, or those lessons forward in anything else that you do. And so if you, if you can approach life, um, with the similar passion, um, I think you're going to be successful at almost anything that you do. Right. So I think that's what we're trying to do. And it's when, when you see them, when, when you see it clicking, you know, that, that, that they're getting what they need, I guess. And they can't get what they need without a guide like you. So thank you for your passion and your dedication. I mean, it's shining through. Thank you so much, Coach. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Wait, before you go, did we not meet <laughs> once upon a time? You didn't think I was going to let you off the hook, did you? <laughs> not so, baby. Um, 2016 trials. Um, Ooh, yeah. I had a hurdler there. Uh, and... Well, we walked by you, I, and I was just, I pointed out, but she had already, she already knew who you were, but I was she like, did. you know who we're walking by, right? <laughs> and, like, and, <laughs> and she enjoyed it. She, it, was, it was thrilling. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. is awesome. Yeah. But I didn't, uh, I didn't bug you. You didn't, eh? <laughs> no. You can bug me anytime. You see me uh, next time, you, you tap me on I, the shoulder, okay? For sure I will. <laughs> Congrats again. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Next up, it's time to honor our female school sport coach. This woman has transformed the lives of thousands of student athletes. Remember this name, Kelly Gouvea. She's a master motivator and allows her students to achieve their fullest potential. She's coached for 36 years now, more than that, and started when she was in grade 13. Kelly's been coaching track and field, soccer, and flag football at Fletcher's Meadow Secondary School in Brampton for the last 17 years. Yeah, she's an institution. And whether it's an athlete's first time trying out or competing for an offset championship, Kelly dedicates herself to making sure every moment of her student's school sport journey is positive and fulfilling. And here's Coach Kelly now. Welcome. And I got to say, I love that shirt. I might need to borrow it. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> right on. <laughs> Congratulations. OK, nearly four decades um, in this profession for you. This might not be a fair question. But I'm going to ask it anyways. Where does this rank and all the things that you've done and accomplished getting this kind of distinction today? You know, Perdita, it ranks right near the top. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's very nice um, to be recognized for the years that I've put in. And you know, it, it's not only that, but I'm, gr I'm very happy that you are showing this distinguished award and presenting it to the coaches around the province. Oh, my honor, honestly, it's my honor. I've been through every level of sport in this province. And I truly say that my life would have not been the same without coaches like you who see an athlete and mold them. And high school sports, my goodness, one of the most impressionable years of any human being's life. What aspect of mentoring do you find the most rewarding? You know, athletes are so, you know, there's a lot of distractions, I guess, in this age group. But for you, what do you find the most rewarding? I think the most rewarding is that aha moment mm -hmm. when they realize that the team is bigger than just one person and that they, they can understand that everything that they do has some sort of repercussion to the people around them and how they act and how they treat others is what should be at the forefront of everything they do. Yeah, I remember hearing about that accountability. I remember hearing about <laughs> that word, a big, big word when I was uh, in high school, but that, that's a big deal. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to pay special attention to your screen here for a moment. Coach Kelly, you play a big part in my journey by encouraging me with doing all those events. You made me feel very confident in myself. You may believe I could do it. And you're just a really good support system. And I thank you so much for that. So Kelly, uh, I wanna share a little bit about um, what makes you so special as an educator and a coach in the Peel District School Board and at Fletcher's Meadows Secondary. I think first and foremost, it's your, your love for sport and for, for student athletes. Uh, there's never a time when an athlete would feel that they weren't 
um, taken the best care of by you. Um, your coaching stance is one of learning and one of support. And, you know, time and time again, I've seen you on the field and in the gym and out on the track and really just doing whatever you needed to do to make um, student sport the best experience possible for your student athletes. Kelly, you're so well respected. And that's because of her, you know, her ability to connect with uh, people. She's so personal. You're so personable and outgoing and fun to be around. And uh, this, your, you know, your athletes that you connect with feel that. And um, that's why uh, they enjoy being part of your teams and uh, being close with you because they know that uh, they're connected to you and that you truly de care deeply about them. You are a strong woman. You are a rock to a lot of co-workers. You are a rock to me as well. And I look up to you always for leadership, for suggestions, and also for some guidance because we believe and we honor what you think and what you feel. And I appreciate that from you. I love you, Kelly, and the whole Phys Ed staff loves you. Fletcher's Meadows coaching staff appreciates and loves you too. We all honor you, and we're so grateful that you do deserve this. <laughs> so, wow, I'm getting teary-eyed. <laughs> and, and let it out. You, please yeah. do not hold back, because just what came to me is how much you're respected, but most importantly, how much you are loved, right? And of course, I recognize Gavin there, but I call him G. Yeah. I know that name. And of course, Natasha off at the top, representing Canada on the world stage. When you hear those words, those people who have come to speak about what you mean to them, what comes to mind for you? You know, just all of the memories come flashing back and all, all of the things that I've been a part of and uh, how much I've enjoyed it and how much fun I've had and how I've tried to instill that sense of fun and, you know, making your body a better machine and how can we do that and how can we be a better athlete and just seeing that happen for my athletes and uh, you know just that sense of camaraderie for for my colleagues I think that that's just amazing thank you for sharing that yeah absolutely I'm glad you enjoyed it I loved watching some of those familiar faces myself so you've been in the game nearly four decades right still more work for you to do I know but <laughs> do you think about your legacy do you think about okay when I retire whenever that is what do I want people to or what do I want to leave the landscape like when I'm when I'm done here well, I think the biggest thing is that I hope that high school sport comes back stronger than ever. Yeah. I think that that's just such a passion for me. And I've had a number of athletes who really haven't been able to participate in community sport uh, due to financial reasons, that sort of thing. And, I, you know, they have found a niche in, in high school sport and it's been such a special time in their lives. And, and just like you said, it's something they never forget and it builds them up and it helps them become a better person. So I'm hoping my legacy is that high school sport remains just as strong as it always has been and that it continues going forward uh, in the next hundreds of years. <laughs> oh, I love that, I love that. <laughs> and even hearing you speak about that, what comes to mind is, yeah, sure I've been at the world stage and whatnot, but some of my biggest showdowns and rivalries were in high school and having, you know, my, my coach like you saying, you got this, you can do this, like, that's what I remember. So you are leaving your mark. You've left your mark, but you will continue to solidify it. So thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. It was an honor meeting you. Likewise. All right, let's present our good to great category to two, 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 you know what I meant, to two winners. Okay, so talent is one thing, but it takes more than just raw ability for an athlete to get to that next level. It takes their hard work, sure, and their sacrifice, we know, but it takes a coach who truly believes in you and knows just how to motivate you and get the best out of you like promising you food after a really fast time. Just saying. This next round, we celebrate coaches who've converted their athletes' raw talent into success on the field of play. The search for the best has led us to the sport of canoe kayak and the Ottawa River Canoe Club. A former national team athlete himself, Coach Joel Hazen continues to make his mark on the Canadian sports scene, including most recently at the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics. Hey, I wonder if he's still jet-lagged all these weeks later. 
A fearless coach tirelessly dedicated to the betterment of his athletes, Coach Joel knows no bounds and will always go the extra mile to make sure his athletes are prepared, motivated, and ready to conquer anything they put their mind to. And look who it is. I'm thrilled to be joined by the man himself. Welcome, Joel. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thanks for asking. Okay, congratulations on all your success, your athlete success. Okay, we know you're back from Tokyo for a few weeks now. You gotta let me know, how was that? Uh, it was an interesting experience. It was, um, you know, especially during COVID times, uh, um, it, it was very cool. I mean, it was cool to see the racing. It was cool that, that the event happened, to be honest, and that the athletes got to go and, and show their stuff. Um, but it was definitely very interesting being sort of stuck in the village. We weren't allowed out of the village. Um, just really weren't allowed around anybody. Um, so uh, very cool experience to see the athletes race and see that level of competition. And uh, I would say a huge congratulations to the country, Japan, that they were able to pull that off. Yeah, I was shocked that they were able to, but they did in the end, right? We're all grateful for it. So one of the things that I'm fascinated by with coaching, because um, it's something that I know I could never touch because it's such an awesome responsibility, but you have to be able to get a, uh, an athlete to buy into to believing, their belief. I want to know for you, how do you get an athlete to believe that they can achieve something before they've even done it or even believe it themselves? Uh, so, uh, I mean, for us, we're, we're an outdoor sport and, and our biggest performance metric is time. Um, so for us, we do a lot of, of time trials on the water and, and, uh, you know, with Brianna specifically, it was interesting because she started in COVID times. Uh, there were no competitions. We, you know, all competitions last summer were shut down. So basically the only way I got her to buy in, I guess, was it was her against the stopwatch on a race course to say, Hey, you know, you've only been doing this for a little while and, uh, you're pretty close to some international times here. That's pretty cool. Um, did you even realize this? And, and Pri was like, no, I had no idea. Um, she's just so new to the sport that, that it, it, that's the way we got it going. That's the way we, we started and, and she bought in. Yeah, challenging her and keeping her motivated. Okay, we have a little bit of a, a present for you. Is that the right word? I think it is. Yeah, here's a present for you. Pay attention. Okay. New Kayak Ontario and all the paddlers Ontario, huge congratulations on your award. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to uh, be able to call you a trusted colleague and a good friend. So again, congratulations. Way to go. Thank you, Joel, for giving me moments in my life where I feel able and whole again. Thank you for believing in my human spirit. Thank you for pushing me when I was scared. And thank you for sharing your beautiful family with me. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you for taking so much extra time in your own life to give me a chance to reach my dreams. Thank you for being such an amazing, altruistic, genuine friend to me along the way. And most of all, thank you for relighting the fire in my soul that I thought after my catastrophic accident was forever taken away from me. And I just had a quick quote for you that made me think of you. <laughs> Um, behind every confident athlete is a fearless coach who refused to let their athlete be anything but the best they can be. Oh, you're a fearless coach, all right. And I love, love that saying. I want to know a little bit more about Brianna's story, though, because one year, boom, she's on the world stage at the Paralympics. Can you just give us a little bit of insight on that? Uh, yeah, that was a crazy year. Um, so... Um, I got a phone call from, from Brian, the actual, the guy in the video who, who basically said, Hey, I have this athlete from wheelchair rugby. Um, she's looking for something a little different because her sport's been shut down during COVID. Uh, she's thinking about canoe kayak. She's coming down to your club. Uh, see what you think. And so <clears throat> she arrived at our club and it was, I, I remember clearly it was the day after the, the August long weekend, 2020. And, uh, I said, uh, you know, what do you, what do you want to do in this sport? And, and, um, do you want to just come down and paddle? Like, what are your goals? We, we talked a little bit about it. And um, at one point she was like, I think I want to go to Tokyo. And I sort of looked at her and I was like, no, no, I, I don't do miracles. Sorry. It's like a year away. And uh, so she was like, okay. I said, well, how about this? How about let's get on the water let's do some training and let's see how it goes. And then 
honestly, it was a month later, we had a, a virtual national championships because um, we couldn't race. And uh, it, we did a 200 meter race and I kind of looked at the stopwatch and I was like, no, no, like one minute, that's not right. There's no way she's only been out of the water a month. And uh, so we did another one and I was like, yeah, it's still one minute. Um, so the stopwatch didn't lie. And I was like, I, I think this girl's got something going here. And uh, so, yeah, we, we kept training over the winter. And then I sort of said to her, well, um, our, our Olympic trials are in March. If, if we're going to do this mid-March, you need to be, we need to get out to BC. We need to find some water to train over the winter. And we did. And, and so, yeah, we went out to Victoria, uh, spent three weeks out there, then three weeks in Vancouver and raced the trials. And um, she, she qualified uh, to go to the World Cup. And we didn't even know, we, we shouldn't be classified internationally. So we weren't 100% sure what class she was going to fall in. But we knew that at the World Cup, she likely wasn't going to qualify in the kayak um, because we thought she was a higher category that she was in. So, but she raced the trials in the kayak. And then our national team coach said, have you thought about racing in the VA, which is the canoe event? And we were like, no. Um, and they said, well, you got five weeks to prepare for the World Cup in the VA. Go for it. And I kind of went again. I'm like, I don't do miracles. Like, I'm used to able body sport, I guess, where it's like, no, no, you train for years and years and years and years before you go out and try out at a World Cup. Well, I got five weeks. I'm like, OK, here we go. So we took the decision of the best way to get her going in a ball and teach her how to steer because it's a boat that she has to steer herself. And, uh, you know, she's pretty incredible because in five weeks she lined up at the World Cup and qualified for the Paralympics. And then next thing we knew, she was also eligible for the kayak because she classed in a lower class than we thought she was going to class in. So then again, next thing we knew, we had two events we were racing at the Paralympics and, and it was like, holy crow. So that kind of just came really fast. And then, uh, you know, we just raced at the Paralympics and she was fifth in the VA and eighth in the, in the kayak, made both finals. And um, I, I said to her, I'm like, wow, let's see, during COVID last year, you started a new sport. Then you started a second new sport. You went out, raced Olympic trials, which was your first race ever raced at the world cup which was your second race ever qualified for the olympics went out finished fifth and eighth what are we doing for an encore next year it was what like a, <laughs> what an outstanding story because what what comes to mind to me is clearly the two of you are working hard right it takes a lot of that but it's also the fact that you're both of you are like let's go with this like let's see how far we can take this and look at that. So you need to add Miracle Worker to your resume, right? And your business uh, card officially I now. Guess so yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. owe that to you quickly before we go because I know we are running out of a little bit of time. But I want to know for you, what drives you as a coach, right? Like it can't be you know making these teams and the medals and the accolades, but what's beyond that for you? Uh, I think it's just the incredible stories um, and, and the stories that you know. For example, the Bree story. It's not something that an office worker, I guess there's not too many that are, you know, sitting at the Canadian revenue agency and going, I guess what I got to do this year. So, uh, you know, what drives me to coach is I think it's the incredible stories. It's the incredible people. It's the, the different experiences um, and, and being able to share that with the athletes and, and other coaches as well. Um, yeah. That's what's got me going. I guess what keeps me going. Yeah. And you've had a big hand in a lot of these stories, right? And they couldn't be written without a coach like you. Thank you for your time. I hope you're not feeling super jet lagged, right? Still all these weeks later and congrats once again. All right, thank you so much. Our second recipient perfectly embodies the quote that I mentioned earlier. A good coach can change the game, but what can a great coach do? Oh, they can change your life. Toronto's Dallas Price continues to transform the lives of young girls through the sport of rugby. As a youngster growing up playing sports, Dallas knew she wanted to pave the way for others like her, including wanting to be the first girl to play in the MLB. Each and every day, Dallas teaches confidence, respect, and strength to her athletes, looking to leave each of them with skills that extend beyond the field. In Dallas's words, she's creating a whole little army of great human beings. And look who's joining me now. Dallas is here. A much deserved honor. Congratulations. But I got to imagine as you are working away and doing your job, you're just doing what you love. But what does a, an honor like this mean to you, that kind of recognition? I, I mean, yeah, I, 
I don't obviously coach just for a recognition. I think what is great about recognitions like this is that it's putting a priority on making a difference because there's always, you know, recognition when you win or you, you know, make a lot of money and you're really successful in, you know, a tangible way. But this, I think, is a nice honor to actually show that there's recognition and there's meaning and support for, you know, just putting your head down and, and changing lives and, and helping people. So I think that's, that's what I love about, you know, awards like this, not necessarily the award, but what it represents, um, I think is more important. Well said, well said. And of course, there are a lot of people up for grabs and it came down to you and you've, you've earned that. So let's talk about this MLB career thing, Kay. Can we talk about this for a moment? Can you take me back to just what your mindset is? Because clearly, you know, I love that, that sentiment, right? And it's, it's true that women and girls don't get enough shine in sport, but when you said that, when you had those kinds of aspirations, where did that come from and how does that inform the way you coach and the way that you teach now? I mean, I grew up with an older brother and all my cousins were boys. I was the first girl in all, you know, both sides of my family. So I always grew up with boys and boys could do this and boys could do that. My parents, well, my mom really pushed that anything my brother did, I could do, right? Like we both took karate, we both did piano, everything. So, but in life, it wasn't like that, you know, all these boys kind of have all these opportunities. And, you know, when I was young, we just didn't, it was just kind of a, a side note of, oh, girl sports. So I remember going to a Blue Jays game with my dad and, you know, I, I thought, okay, I could, I could do that. I could be the first girl who does that. Like it still hasn't happened, but um, yeah, it was just something I, I was always a person who, if you told me I couldn't, I was, I don't know if that's stubborn, defiant, or, or, <laughs> or driven, but um, I just wanted to prove people wrong. So I just thought, okay, well, if no girl has done it, then why not me? Um, so I'm still kind of a little bit like that. I, that's why I started playing rugby in high school is everyone's like, oh, you're too small. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll show you. So I started playing rugby just because people told me I couldn't. You're so. my kind of woman, right? Like stubborn, <laughs> hard-headed. If you say I can't, I'm doing it. I love all of that. <laughs> okay, we've been keeping a little secret from you, but it will be revealed now. Pay attention to your screen. Um, Dallas, I'm so, so, so lucky to have had you as a coach. Um, you have definitely built me into the athlete I am today. I'm now going into my third year at UVic and am a large contributing player on the team. Um, you've helped me not only with my athletic abilities, but with my confidence as well on the field and my leadership abilities. And I'm so, so, so grateful for the player you have built me into today. And I know that you'll continue to do the same for all your players in the future. Dallas, you always help us feel empowered because you always let us know that we are strong we are beautiful. We we can do anything the boys can do. Like you even sometimes say, look how the boys are training. You can do that. You and you really show us. And you sometimes when we want to give up, you're always there to talk and talk it through. And it's like, and you're just a very approachable person that we can talk to. And you, I think that's you make us feel power, powered by just like being there and just being that biggest support person you can be. Dallas, you're so deserving of this award. Um, I feel like you're probably trying to, you know, tell yourself, oh, I just got this for whatever reason. And da, da, da. No, like you are 100% so deserving of this award. You have helped out so many young women and um, set us on or, or encouraged us to make our own decisions in setting us on a good path for our future. Um, you've made us strong in the body, but also strong in the mind. And that's exactly what a great coach is meant to do. I'm so grateful that you are able to be my first rugby coach. That's such an honor and pride for me to say, um, to say that I'm still in contact with my first rugby coach, to say that I found a friend in my first rugby coach. Oh, I have all the feels. <laughs> do you not feel that? Like, can you put that into words for us? I see the, I see the emotion. Uh, I like, I love these girls. I, I always say like rugby is a catalyst for me and it, it really has nothing to do with rugby. Like it's so little, I know coaching at tech, um, you know, where I coached Asia first, it, 
you know, the struggles we went through with, you know, just the school board and getting a field and, and, you know, trying to get numbers and it's inner city. So we don't really get a lot of support. And so many times I thought, you know, I like, this isn't worth it. If I'm here to coach rugby, this isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people like Asia or, you know, charity or like all so many other girls that would text me on a Friday night when they're like having a family problem or whatever is Janisha, you know, helping her with her, you know, home stuff. It's, I'm like, this is why I do it. And if it was for rugby, I probably would have quit a long time ago. Um, Cause we don't have a big winning streak and all these titles and whatever it was, it was that. And, you know, and I, you know, was blessed to be able to do rugby and coach rugby, but I know that, you know, God had bigger plans for me as to why I was there and why I coach. And that's, that transcends what we're doing on the field. So yeah, that's, it's very nice. Yeah, I'm, it's not often that I'm lost for like I'm a professional speaker and I'm just like, I want you to tell me more because I can like listen to you all day, like the passion and just why you're invested in this. So I will sum up another question, but I want to know when you and your athletes are having like really hard days, really difficult moments, because we tend to focus on the wins, right? And, but I want to know in those moments, what is it that you're saying to yourself what is it that you're saying to your athletes to really pick yourself up and move on to fight another day? Um, I think, you know, most, most people, I think, will say that women are, are stronger, are the stronger of, of the, the, the species. Are, and um, yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> yes. so I think that is because we have had a harder time with things. And mm-hmm. I don't, I don't look at struggles as like, oh, this sucks because, you know, it's harder for me because pressure is what makes things strong, right? That's what you do in the gym. You put pressure on muscles, they get stronger. You, you know, take a job that's really hard and then you grow. I don't think you learn as much when you win and when things are easy. So I'm very grateful that I was a girl because I think I would have taken things for granted if I was a boy because I would have just gotten doors open and you don't even realize, right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that a lot of the girls I coach come from, you know, maybe a a more difficult background, or maybe they just had to fight a little bit more. They just didn't get handed as much opportunity as, you know, maybe others. And I think like, we need to celebrate that instead of like, you know, I was stuck there for a while, like complaining, Oh, I'm a girl. I'm not getting opportunities or I'm not getting a coaching position, but it's like, that's why I fight. Like if I, if I maybe just gotten all those doors open, like, I don't think I would be strong now. So I think that we need to look at like a game that's lost or whatever. Like you, you learn from that. And if you won all your games, you're probably pretty cushy and you're probably pretty, pretty complacent. So I'm very thankful that we've had harder times or when the girls are having hard times, like this is, this will grow you and you will be stronger later on in life. Um, so be very thankful for those opportunities where things are really hard. Um, yeah, because I think that's, that's how we grow and that's, that's why I am who I am. Um, so I'm very thankful for those more so than the wins, I think. Right on. And you've proven here that you're not just a coach, you're also a sports psychologist. So like, look at that. Okay. (laughs) Look at that. (laughs) Thank you for your passion, your words and your fight. We all feel inspired just listening to you. Honestly, congratulations (laughs) again. Thank you. Time to present the Everyone Matters Coach Award to one special recipient. Okay, so we know sometimes we think of excellence as winning medals, trophies, or ribbons. I mean, they're cool to have. I have some. I love them. But as we're hearing and as we've experienced, excellence is about more than that. It's about making space for everyone to feel like they belong or believing in an athlete before they've ever believed in themselves. This year's recipient has greatly influenced the culture of his team and the wider community. Abdurrahim Musa coaches men's artistic gymnastics at the Tumblers Gymnastics Center in Orleans, Ontario, that's near Ottawa. A former high-performance athlete and coach in his home country of Morocco, Coach Musa has found immediate success in his new home here in Canada. Success for this coach, oh no, it's not measured by medals, but by seeing all his athletes rise to become the best versions of themselves. 
is here, of course. It's so good to see you, and I, I understand that this award must mean a great deal to you, but can you put into words for us exactly how significant it is for you? To be honest, I will, uh, my words will be to all chairperson of CIAO, uh, the Coach Association of Ontario and the Coach Association of Canada, all the governing body, educators and coaches, uh, developers, also the coaches out there. I am very pleased to be part of this important celebration and for the support it's offer. I acknowledge the hard of uh, uh, all uh, the hard efforts made by all the, uh, all the coaches out there, uh, not just the winners or the, uh, the awarded. So many of coaches style out there and they do their best in order to participate to sports development, children development, and also strive for excellence. And this award means really, really a lot of uh, energy and a lot of motivation for the future for me to do better and better. Thank you. I like that. Even more motivation, more passion into what you do. So I got to ask you, what is the, the most fulfilling part of your job? Because, of course, it's so hard. There's so much that goes into it. Sometimes the athletes go away. You never get to understand or hear what impact you've made. But what for you is that joy? The joy is watching children in development, watching and uh, enjoying the application of science of sports and enjoying what a human being can do with their body as soon as you offer them the opportunity and the best, safest way to do uh, so that's really the biggest joy. And uh, the, the, the one other point is uh, we are participating to build better generations, smarter generations, and you see that work going on with every generation coming and coming after. And that's a really great pleasure to, to in our job. So. <laughs> That's right, the impact that you have on the lives of all of these, you know, impressionable athletes. Okay, I want you to pay special attention, Coach Musa, to your monitor. Musa, you're always so energetic, so goofy, so funny. Like, I can't describe how, like, unique you are when it comes to training kids seriously and joking around and having a good time with them. Congratulations, Musa. I just want to thank you for being the best boss I've ever had and one of my closest colleagues at the gym. Uh, congrats. Proud of him as I look up to him and I hope to be like him someday as he has been a role model for me for the past three years managing our wacky gym and his even more wacky athletes while still making us better and making the gym better. So Musa, if I have one thing to say to you is thank you. Uh, thank you for everything you've done for us um, since you've been here at Tumblr's, especially this past year. Uh, thank you for the love that you show your athletes, for the dedication you show to this club, the enthusiasm you bring to the team. Um, thank you for everything you do behind the scenes. Uh, there's only one Musa. I always say that to everyone. I wish I could take you and chop you in 10, uh, but I can't. And so that's all I want to say really is thank you. We would not be where we are without you. Uh, there is only one Coach Musa, and it's clear that you are admired by so many quickly. I want to get your reaction to hearing, you know, all those wonderful tributes to you. Seriously, this is so touching and really very pleasant. And I, 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 I do just my work. I don't expect like others to tell me good stuff about what I do. And, but this is really very pleasant and give you just a lot of energy to give more and more. Thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome, and it's so deserving. And like you said, gives you more motivation to keep doing your job. Let's talk about your job, because you're really successful uh, in this profession of coaching. But can you let us in on some of your keys to success? What makes you so good at what you do? 
I will say it's my coaching philosophy. My coaching philosophy has changed uh, continuously with uh, time and with experience and uh, updates of science of sports. My coaching philosophy is a composition of uh, answers to whom, uh, who, uh, why, when, and what. Uh, it's all, uh, the overall goal is to have fun and it's, uh, it's all about uh, the, the, the overall development of the child and achieving personal goals. There is no focus on winning. It's all coming with joy and a lot of satisfaction and congrats. So, however, uh, in activity, we are, our goal is, our philosophy is to create an environment that leads through questions, then directives helping to create more self-sufficient athletes than this uh, uh, depend on athletes that depend on coach. So uh, our goals are to offer the best experience in our organization to our uh, the best exp sports experience to our to everyone in our community, despite their goals, their vision, or their talents. So what I really share with my kids to to let them enjoy what they are doing and to set the Principles of principles of sports in life is uh, my uh, favorite book, which is uh, built on three words. It's dream it, list it, do it. So if you want to be the king of the world, you can be, you want to be Olympian, you can be, you want to be anything in your life, you can be, but you have to be able to dream it and you have to list it and set the way and the plan and uh, the goals for it, to achieve steps to achieve it. And then you are on the dot and respect the progress and it's time to do it. <laughs> oh, I like that coaching philosophy, right? You want to have an athlete who's independent. You also want to have fun, and then you also have to believe you can achieve. Coach Musa, thank you for your time. Congratulations on this honor. I know there'll be more in your future. Take care. Thank you so much. It's time for our next award. And listen, we are so proud to present it in partnership with Hydro One. It's called the Hydro One Safe Play Award. This award recognizes a coach who's committed to promoting safety within their team and their community. An outstanding coach who promotes positive, inclusive, and safe sport experiences. This year's recipient takes us east to visit the oldest rowing club in Canada. Talk about legacy, the Ottawa Rowing Club. Zach Lewis is the head coach of the Ottawa Rowing Club, and his reach is felt far and wide across the club. In two short years since coming aboard, he is certainly leaving his mark. This includes establishing new safe sport policies, launching the inaugural Pride Parade Paddle this past June, and creating the Anybody Rose Ottawa program. Zach ensures each day at the ORC is focused on two key areas, athlete safety and member well-being. As for Zach, nothing is more important than a safe, fun, and inclusive environment for everyone to succeed. And of course, Zach is joining me now. Zach, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure is all mine. Listen, I'm so excited to talk to you. Congratulations, by the way. Let me get that out of the way because it's a big day, big deal for you. So what really piqued my interest were the initiatives that you started, right? The Pride Parade Paddle and then anybody can row. I don't know if I can row, but I'd love to one day. I want to know what your thinking was with starting these initiatives and why those were really important to you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, let me start by saying that anybody can row with a little bit of uh, love and attention. And you know what? You ever come down to Ottawa, we'll for sure get you out in the water and get you in a boat. Um, but yeah, the the Pride Parade was uh, the Pride Parade paddle was something that happened for the first time this year. It was created to kind of highlight and celebrate the uh, the diversity in our organization and of our membership. It's a, I mean, the Pride Parade itself is a celebration of kind of coming together in love, acceptance, friendship. Um, and all the things that I think that we as a sporting or recreation community should strive to promote. Um, and it's, I, I think it's more a symbol of how far LGBTQ rights have come and how there's still some work to be done in various places, um, including sport. Um, unfortunately, there are still athletes in our own backyard who feel uh, unsafe or unsupported um, being themselves. And this event helps to remind us that there's still 
uh, work to be done and we can still be a step, um, you know, for that change for the better. Our, our sport, you know, offers a little something for everybody and it's important to create a space where everyone feels accepted and welcomed in our community and uh, I guess free to express themselves in whatever way they see fit. Um, so it was something that happened for the first time this year. We had about 35 of our members uh, that came out and participated. Uh, and hopefully next year, we're looking to expand it to other user groups on the river, whether it be uh, like other rowers, canoers, kayakers, motorboatists, whatever, just kind of find a way to you know, use our medium, which is the you know, beautiful spot we've got on the Ottawa River to kind of to, pr to promote that sort of acceptance. And I then the, the Everybody Rose Ottawa initiative was something, sorry, <laughs> Um, the Everybody Rose Ottawa initiative was something that I started, uh, well, the club started after last year um, with so many uh, local communities being underserviced or were undersupported during the COVID pandemic um, with local rec facilities being closed and organized sport being closed and schools not being able to offer extracurriculars. It was an opportunity to kind of use our sport as an outreach program and bring the programming that we've got and the coaching that we've got and the facilities and the resources we've got to communities that would otherwise never get a chance to try it. Um, it was something that was sponsored by our local MP. Uh, we had some support from the Canada Summer Jobs Grant and we were hoping to reach about 60 kids and we got almost to 100 and I hope next year with like what we've learned from it and kind of the pilot that we ran, we'd be able to double that and get, you know, I don't know, 150, 200 kids through the program so they can all come check out rowing, get on the water for the first time, learn a little more about you know, what our sport's about, how the commitment and the dedication and the teamwork and, uh, and the effort and all that kind of things that we learn and we teach through our sport can be applied to real life and, you know, create successful human beings, not just uh, athletes. I love that. I love your ambition and I love that you're a doer. Like you have something in your mind. You're like, I'm going to do this and make this happen. Yeah, fingers crossed that things are like doubled and beyond next time. All right, we have a nice treat for you. Okay, there are a few people who have something to say to you. Pay attention. So Zach. Your ability to not just coach on the water, but to be able to do all of that work you do off the water. I know you work like 14 to 15 hours a day sometimes, and I know that because I was the one that asked you to track it, but you, you work so hard off the water. I get emails from you at like six in the morning to just, you know, outline your different policies. You've taken our safety plan in the club and you've made it move away from individual onus to the club also taking responsibility. So now the club understands and knows its obligations that we need to track our rowers when they leave on an individual basis. We need to make sure that the lights are on the boats. You found a creative solution for that one as well. We kept losing bow lights everywhere, but you know, you work together with the board to make sure that everyone's properly illuminated and we don't just have some boats that look like Christmas trees and some boats that are like that dark horse coming across the river. And your work with the athletes on the safe sport and also bringing the Everybody Rose program to the Ottawa Rowing Club You've shown that the rowing club doesn't need to be this like little spot at the bottom of two cliffs in Ottawa that no one knows about. We have a responsibility to reach out to our community, to provide and show our sport to different people and to show what rowing is all about. And rowing is all about one, that competition feeling that we, that we feel and that you've experienced and that you push our athletes to drive for, but also that idea that, you know, you don't have to win an Olympic medal to be part of the rowing club. You can join and be part of a, open community of different people from different backgrounds and you're working to diversify this club and it's a really amazing thing to watch sports in general are usually an escape for people it's a good way to get away from life and be able to you know go in the water and row for a couple hours a day just get your mind away from some things and you know another way to deal with that is having those role model role models and you know leaders in the community that you can also go to outside of sport to make sure that you know if you're not doing well or you need something you know, there's always somebody there for you. And I think Zach does a really good job of making sure that people are aware that he's there for them and he's only a phone call away or a tech message away. The impact you've had at the ORC is like actually spectacular. Um, I love working with you. You know, you're one of my best friends. I'm proud of you. And uh, congratulations, man. Well-deserved. Oh, yeah. Well-deserved. And what blows my mind about you is, like, you've only been there two years. And, like, hearing all this stuff described, it sounds like 10 years worth of work. I want to know from you, what is the most fulfilling part of this, this role for you right now? I think without a doubt, it's the relationships that have been able to be cultivated there. I mean, my, I guess, friend group, peer group, colleague group going in was predominantly people in their, you know, 20s, 30s. And now I'm sitting here and my my, my group of close friends and colleagues is everything from like the 17, 18 year old kids that I've got in our high school program to, 
the 65, 75, 80 year old masters that we've got at the club. And I, I think sport is a really cool mechanism of transcending age and race and gender and whatever else, like barriers that would typically be um, obstacles in society for people to become friends or colleagues or whatever else. And it, the, the club has really created an opportunity for me to get to know people outside the sporting realm. And, and yeah, the, the, the partnerships and the relationships that I've made through the club have been awesome. We I'm very need- lucky. Yeah, we're no, we're lucky too, right? Like we need more people like you. You're thinking your mindset, and the fact that you get stuff done. And just hearing those tributes about you, I mean, you're amazing, and we know why you got this award. But I think it speaks loud and clear. Enjoy this day, enjoy it. Like I always tell, I'm telling all these coaches now, just brag, brag on yourself. You're allowed. Enjoy this one. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Our next award is one of my faves, the Susan Kitchen Trailblazer Award. It's named after the founder of the Coaches Association of Ontario. Now, this award is given to a coach who can be described perfectly by the word trailblazer. It's one of my favorite words in the dictionary. That's someone who sets a path for others to follow. And like Susan, has made a lasting impact on the Canadian sport landscape. This year's winner has been instrumental in transforming the lives of young men in Toronto's Jane and Finch community. Jordan McFarland was born and raised in Toronto's Jane and Finch community. And since 2006, he has been using the sport of basketball to empower young boys in the neighborhood. His involvement through YACE, which stands for the Youth Association for Athletics, Academics and Character Education, is using sport and education to build 21st century learners and positive global citizens. He firmly believes that if given the opportunity, every young athlete can aspire to grow and become whatever they dream to be. And here he is, Jordan McFarland himself. Jordan, come on in. We want to chat. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, so this is an honor. I don't even know how to react right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, what you're doing is amazing. And Yace is so powerful. What do you hope that these young boys, these young men get from the program? We just want them to be successful. We want them to be contributing members of society. Um, we want to teach them responsibility. We want to make sure that one day they could um, take care of their own families and, and pass on the teachings that we are giving to them. Um, wherever their paths take them, that's, that's, that's completely up to them. But we're just... Uh, we're kind of like the teachers or the coaches that, that, that are there to guide them along the process. So we just want them to be successful. That's, that's it. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think it's, it's wonderful how you're approaching things. So as I was reading your story and about Yace, um, this kept coming to mind. I, wanted, I was curious if you saw yourself in these young um, boys and if there's anything you feel that they're getting that you didn't and if you know you feel any pride any sense of change or difference in this generation at all oh of course I mean I, I I see myself in almost every single one of these 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 children that we help I I came from a single parent home um poverty not much opportunity so uh when now I have a chance to give back and, and provide some of that op opportunity um, and provide some, some much needed resources to some of these, these amazing talented youth, uh, I jump at the opportunity. I'm super excited to do it. I'm passionate about it. Um, and just, just like watching you know, a plant or a flower bloom, when you're in it from the beginning of a, a young child's development, and then you see them become young men and they're successful and you, know, you don't expect anything back. It's just, it's just, it's just watching that evolution that, that gets me so excited. So yeah. I, I'm extremely passionate about what I do and I'm going to continue doing it for as long as I'm breathing. Yeah, you better not stop, okay? You better not stop. You keep going. <laughs> we, want, we want to see more of this. So we went and did a little bit of digging and we found some people, okay? And we actually got a few of them to share their thoughts about you. So check this out. Congratulations, Coach Jordan. Thank you so much for being such an amazing coach. The kids love you. Um, and all the work that you do in the community is so amazing, and you're literally saving lives. And we appreciate how much you look out for us on a daily basis. You completely deserve this coach. You've worked very hard, and your hard work is paying off. 
Jordan, you are special because you're so passionate about the sport. You truly uh, care about your players and uh, you really push them to greatness. You know, the difference between good and great is in the small details and you really have an eye for that and you push your players, you recognize their needs, particularly uh, working with racialized black youth from the Jaden Finch community. And um, you're able to take them through the process that you created uh, led by your passion, empathy, and care, and you bring the best out of them. And people in the community uh, respect you for that. And uh, you built a brand affiliated with your name and with the ACE. Mac was good. It's X. Uh, we've known each other now for over nine years, probably even going on a little bit more than that. And in the nine years that I've known you, we've gotten a chance to become better friends. You've been at my wedding and we've been able to grow multiple businesses together. But the most important thing is how you have been able to impact the young people that you've been around. You're a very special person in the way that you give back, not only for your community, but the way you give back from your heart. We can tell that your passion is there and we see it in everything that you do. If I had a chance to talk to you right now, Mac, and you were right beside me, I'd say, bro, keep going. I'd say one of the things that you always tell us and you tell the rest of the kids, hard work meets talent when talent doesn't work hard. And I know that you have both talent and hard work. So I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, bro. Jordan, you're magic. You are magic, <laughs> right? I wow. gotta get your reaction to hearing all those voices speak about your impact. Just just, just seeing the, some of the youth um, in that feed and then uh, some of my, my, my friends, some of my closest friends, um, young men that have helped me, you know, develop as a man, not, not just as a coach, just, just hearing the feedback, like, um, cause as you like coach as a coach, um, sometimes it's a thankless job. Um, you don't hear it. You don't hear thank yous or I appreciate you that much. So when you actually hear it from some of your colleagues and some of the youth, like it, it really hits home and it's, it's not what I'm in it for, but it is refreshing. It is refreshing to hear. And it, it gives me that push. It makes me say, you know what? I'm making a difference. I'm just one man. But if I can continue to do what I'm doing, maybe it'll become contagious and I can get more to do some of the work so that we can continue to help the youth. So I, I'm, I'm flattered. I don't even, I'm, I'm sweating over here. <laughs> I'm sweating over here. We, we love it. Okay, I'm going to end with this because, you know, there are a lot of um, young aspiring coaches watching this broadcast right now, watching you. If there's one or two things that you can share with them about what makes you successful, your philosophy or your, your keys to success as a coach, what would you say to them as they start their careers? I would say whatever it is that you want to do, if it's especially coaching, you, you really have to put in the work and apply yourself. Um, uh, you have to work on your craft, study your craft, get it next to perfection if you can. Along the way, there's going to be, you know, obstacles, bumps and bruises, but you can't let it just let it discourage you. You just have to remember what you're in it for. And I think as coaches, we have to understand it's not about the wins and the losses. It's about the teaching and, 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 and giving back. You're giving a lot of yourself to different individuals. Um, a lot of individuals that come from backgrounds much like yourself. So as long as you have that passion behind it and understand that success is on the other side of hard work, once you get that concept and you apply yourself, you'll be able to achieve any goal that you set. So I would love to inspire the next generation of coaches. Um, and I mean, hopefully I'm, I'm doing the work that will allow me to get a couple more people on board. You know? I'll say you've already inspired the next generation of coaches. You absolutely have, and you will continue to do that. Keep doing the work that you're doing. You're such you know, a bright light in that community and in this province as a whole when it comes to coaching. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. We are here, our last award of the day. I mean, where did the time go? This last award is a great one. The Andy Higgins Lifetime Achievement Award, which honors a man I knew well. Andy dedicated countless hours to the sport through coaching. In 2019, we lost Andy, we lost a giant, but his five decades of coaching made us all know that there is nobility in the profession. 
This year's winner has coached for over 33 years in the sport of figure skating. Ottawa's Darlene Joseph has made Canadian sport history, starting from her time as a high-performance athlete, including skating professionally, on the first international tour of Disney on Ice, to coaching at the highest ranks in Canada. Darlene has made sport a better place for generations to come. For Darlene, those early morning alarm clocks and late night evenings have never felt like a job. The opportunity to do something she loves so much and leave a lasting impression on a young athlete is what drives her to continue to coach and tie up her skates and hit the ice. And look who's joining me now, Darlene Joseph. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so now you have something extra special to add to that extra long resume of yours and the trophy case. In your long list of accomplishments, where does this one rank or how do you feel about this one? Well, thanks very much, Perdita. Um, this is probably one of the best acknowledgements I've had as a coach. It's very special. Um, I know the nomination was submitted um, by members at our club and, uh, you know, I was really honored, surprised, humbled by it. And, um, you know, it is kind of the um, accumulation of decades of work. And, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate to do all of that at the Gloucester Skating Club with so many great colleagues and skaters and the support of all of them over the years. All right. I hope you really let yourself bask in this one, right? Like really enjoy it and brag a little bit, right? Like take it wherever you go, like the grocery store or work again, you know, just show it off. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I'm really passionate about is women in sports and especially on the coaching side. We don't see tons of women in sport in the province of the country, but I want to know how you've seen that landscape change over your career. And if you think we're doing enough to highlight the profession, especially on the women's side. Well, I think in, in our sport, in figure skating, uh, we have a lot of women coaches. However, there, it, there's difficulty um, in those years when they decide they would like to have a family and, and stuff like that because we, we coach mostly in the afternoons and the evenings. So that family time is impacted by um, your coaching. But I feel the um, women in coaching in Canada are really taking a step forward and we're um, being um, recognized as professionals and, you know, having full-time careers as coaches is just an amazing uh, opportunity, like to do something you love and then to actually make a professional career out of it is great. And I think we see more and more support uh, for women in coaching and for advancement in coaching as well. So um, over the last three decades, I've seen a lot of progress and a lot of support in that way. Yeah, that's encouraging and hopefully more to come. It's interesting. I remember, um, you know, in track and field, one of the big issues that came up in the last couple of years is the fact that you know, when women want to start a family, it's almost seen like, well, oh my gosh, if you have a child, it's almost like it's an affliction or it's, you know, an ailment, something to stop you. But I think more and more companies and industries are learning like, look, this is an asset. It's beautiful that women can have these careers and have their families too. Let's find ways to support them. So hopefully we keep that going. And of course, women like you are, are paving the way for the rest of us. Okay, we have a bit of a, a treat for you, a bit of a surprise. I want you to take a look at the monitor. Darlene, you're so compassionate and dedicated and supportive. You know, I've never met someone who is so professional in the way that they conduct themselves, whether it's at the rink or an event or at a board meeting running the club. And, you know, you always show up with your 100% with whatever it is that's going on. And I think the skaters realize that and they see it. And because of that, they show up and they want to give their 100% every time they step on the ice. What I wanted to talk about was my experience going to challenge with you, Darlene, and um, on trying to make it to nationals. And I never thought that I would make it to nationals. I was so far down and I was just skating for me. And then it was like, I finished, we were happy and it was, we were happy about the skate. And then we got to be happy about being able to go to nationals. And it was, it was just the perfect way to experience something as a young athlete. Um, where you're not focused on that result. And, and, it's, and it was because of you that I got to do that. I want to thank you personally for all the support that you've given me as a skater, but now as a coach, all the amazing instructions that you keep 
offering and just sharing with me um, techniques and tips on how to make my skaters better and how to make my coaching successful throughout the years. Uh, Darlene, congratulations on your award. I believe you deserve it because with your long history of ska of the figure skating career, starting all the way when you used to skate, like at our age, and now when you coach, you were always, I believe you were always the best. And even now you're, you're one of the most special coaches to me. Well, Darlene, congratulations. Uh, once again, you have been acknowledged for your great efforts and contribution, uh, not only to figure skating, but to amateur sport in general. I'm so very proud that you are our director of skating at the Gloucester Skating Club. Um, congratulations, Darlene. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us and helping us to achieve our goals. Uh, we really appreciate everything you've done for us. Thank you so much for being the most wonderful coach through all these years. Thank you so much for motivating us through thick and thin, pushing us no matter what. And thank you so much for being one of the main reasons why we all love this sport so much. We love you, darling. <laughs> Like the, and then they do the hard, like, how could you not love that? Yeah, oh, that is such a beautiful tribute. I mean, we've been showing these videos to our coaches, and that, that's one of the longest ones that I've seen, right? <laughs> so many people love you. When you hear that out loud, what just comes to, to the surface for you emotionally? Well, I'm just so grateful and thankful. I've had um, such a wonderful um, career and an opportunity to work with such great athletes and uh, Heather as our GM and board members, and they've all supported me in so many ways, um, whether it was I was running for a national board or a, a provincial board, they were always there to help. And, you know, they challenge me. And so that's great. I try to challenge them and uh, they challenge me to be better every day too. So I'm just so fortunate. I'm just very blessed too have had the opportunity to be part of these athletes' careers and to have been supported in, in such a wonderful way. You've been, you know, a pillar, right, in this sporting landscape for so long. So I'm gonna ask you this, we don't have tons of time, but I wanna know, you've done a lot, but what else would you like to do? Is that too hard of a question or are you gonna take it? <laughs> Well, I'd like to see, you know, my, my athletes continue to grow and develop and just achieve their personal excellence, wherever that is and whatever that pathway is for them. I want to be there to support them 150%. And I want to continue to give back in every way possible to our sport as a volunteer, to our club or organizations, and, you know, to continue to mentor young coaches and have everyone enjoy skating for their life, not just for their competitive careers or their skating. I want them to enjoy it for life, something they always look back on and say, uh, I love to do that. Just hear you answer that. I can tell you're still hungry. You still <laughs> love this. There's still tons of work for you to do. <laughs> Lucky for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pradita. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to the Coaching Association of Ontario. And I'm. Uh, truly honored to be the recipient of this award. All right, so if it wasn't clear to you before we started, it's clear now, right? The depth of talent that we have in the coaching community in this province, it's incredible. I really hope the coaches that we honor today remember tomorrow and the next day, and the next day and the next day, how much we truly appreciate them. And did you hear all of them? They're like, I don't do this for the recognition. Like that was a theme that they all had. It is clear that they are here for the athletes, the next generation, paving the way and making it better for them. But I want them to know that you are truly our province's greatest assets. And we thank you for all the work that you have done and continue to do. All right, now we are thrilled to bring you a very special guest. Please welcome from Hydro One, the Vice President of Marketing and Communications, Jay Armitage. Thanks for that introduction, Perdita. It's a complete pleasure to join everyone today and to celebrate excellence in coaching. As coaches, you make an enormous impact in your communities and we're honored to partner with the Coaches Association of Ontario 
and to congratulate the coaches receiving an award today. We have never needed you more. Those of you being recognized today are selflessly giving up your time to support physical fitness, mental health, and connection in what's been a very challenging 17 months. At Hydro One, we believe we have an important role to energize life. And for us, that means a lot more than keeping the lights on. It means supporting people like you who are energizing life in your community. Safety is our number one priority, and many of our teammates also dedicate their time towards coaching. So on behalf of the entire Hydro One family, I would like to congratulate and offer our gratitude to all of the coaches receiving an award today. I would especially like to recognize Zach Lewis from the Ottawa Rowing Club for winning Hydro One's Safe Play Award. For Zach and all the recipients today, Hydro One is thrilled to provide $500 that can be spent at a Canadian retailer for new equipment or anything you need to make a uh, place safe for your teams. Thank you again for the work that you do in your communities to make your communities safer and more inclusive. Back to you, Perdita. Thank you, Jay. Coaches Ontario, the award winners from today, the entire province want to thank you and, of course, everyone at Hydro One for your commitment to safety and the importance of a coach in building a safe community. Okay, and just before we wrap up today's festivities, I know, like, it's gone really fast, right? Like, we're almost there. But we have one more guest to close out the show. So please help me welcome Alexia Siblis from the Board of Directors of the Coaches Association of Ontario. All yours, Alexia. Thank you, Perdita. I want to say thank you on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Coaches Association of Ontario and to everyone watching today. Thank you for hosting today's celebration, Perdita. Once again, you did an amazing job making our award-winning coaches feel valued for the positive impact they've had on the lives of their colleagues, teams, and athletes. I want to say thank you to our partners in sport, in particular, the Ontario government and the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries for their unwavering support and commitment to Ontario's greatest assets, its coaches. Thank you to Hydro One for your ongoing support and dedication to safe sport and building safe Ontario communities. We are so grateful to have a partner like you. And lastly, a heartfelt thank you to our audience made up of family, friends, athletes and nominators. Every coach knows it takes support of family and friends to be able to give so much time to coaching. Congratulations, award winners. Back to you, Perdita. Thank you, Alexia. I'm totally echoing all of your comments. And I'm so thankful for all the inspiring stories that we all got to witness today. I'm feeling like super inspired, inspired enough that I want to start coaching, like maybe coaching myself. Maybe I should unretire. OK, I know. <laughs> Bad idea. Let me calm down. I, I want to remind you of something really important, right? All week long, starting tomorrow, it's the opportunity to celebrate coaches. National Coaches Week runs from the 18th to 26th of this month. So get out there, share an elbow bump boop, with your coach, and post your appreciation online. Of course, you got to use your hashtag, because that's how we can find you, the hashtag Thanks Coach on all of your social platforms. So get this, from Cochrane to London and Toronto, landmarks like the CN Tower, the Welland Bridge, Mississauga Clock Tower will be lighting up to show their support for the amazing men and women who coach in our beautiful province. Okay, that's it for me. Like, this is the end. Did you have a good time? I had a good time. Once again, my name is Perdita Felician. Thank you for spending this time with me. It was so amazing celebrating coaches at this year's Ontario Coaching Excellent Awards. Bye for now. And remember, thanks, coach.